What's notable about these protests is that they've been very effective with schools, sports teams, and businesses taking notice. Joining us now is Sean Foyt, the founder of Hold the Line. Sean, welcome to the show. All right, you're out in California. You're seeing this unfold. Why are these being effective this time when we haven't seen them be so effective before? Well, it's not just uh, the protests from the outside. It's really also from the inside. You know, uh, my really good friend, Blake Trinan, he's one of the pitchers for the Dodgers. And he, uh, he issued a statement, and he actually doesn't have social media, so he issued it through me. I got, it, got the word out for him. And he expressed, hey, I'm a Christian. I'm a believer in God. I don't like it when, when my, uh, with my way of life and my faith is mocked. I don't want to be a part of this. I don't agree with this. And so I think what you're seeing right now is a total implosion from the inside as well as from the outside right now. And it really is. I mean, it, it's, it's monumental what we're seeing with Bud Light, with Target, with the Dodgers. And I feel like the, it's a season of really pushing back in America right now. You know, when you saw the Dodgers honoring the, you know, so-called Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence over the weekend, the stadium was empty. I was shocked to see that. And so that can't just all be Christians who aren't showing up. It seems like there are other people who are disturbed or upset about this as well. Do you think that's because people fundamentally don't agree or because it's a, ch a children's issue that they don't want their child in front of this? Why would it be for people who aren't of faith? I think, I think they crossed the line. I mean, the enemy always overplays his hand. He always pushes it too far. And when you have a group up there that's mocking Jesus, that has uh, mock crucifixion scenes where they're dressed, they're, they're actually not dressed at all, they're naked, and they're flaunting themselves and they're making fun of God being crucified, you don't understand your fan base of Catholics, your fan base is conservatives. These are the people that love baseball. And it's like these woke CEOs of, of these corporations are totally clueless that the people that they're marketing to, the people that, that buy their product are, are, are Americans, are patriots that love their country, and many of them love God. And they'll, they, they reached a breaking point when you see this outright, uh, uh, this outright outlandish mockery of people's faiths, and I just think they push it too far. You know, conservatives and people of faith should feel very emboldened in this season. This is what we're seeing across America as we travel on our tour, capital to capital city on the kingdom to the capital tour. We're seeing people of faith rise up. It really is an hour of boldness and courage in America. It does seem like they're finally seeing that their voices are being heard. How long do you think that Christians should continue this? Because obviously we're in the middle of Pride Month um, here in America. Do you think this should be just yeah. during... June or should it continue on? I say, you know, keep the keep the pedal to the metal, baby. Keep the keep our foot on the gas until we see a total change in these corporations. I mean, Target moved all uh, the pride stuff and the and, and the uh, you know all their horrible displays. They moved them to the back of the store. But I think as Americans, we stay on them until they remove it totally. Like we don't want our kids exposed to that. We don't want the indoctrination. We definitely don't want Satanists designing pride stuff and then that pushed to our families as we're walking through the aisle trying to get toothpaste. Um, I think it is an hour where we keep the pressure on, we keep, we keep the momentum on, and we don't let up until we see a change. You know, oftentimes we talk about God is love. And so many times you hear people on the left saying, well, where is your God of love in this? If you are standing up against us, what would you say to people who you know, are Christians out there and say, what should my response be to a comment like that? Well, my comment is always, you know, well, who defines love? Are we letting, you know, the, are we letting culture define love? Are we letting woke CEOs define love? Or are we going to actually look to the Bible and see how God defines love? You know, God's love is very clear in scripture when it comes down to marriage, when it comes down to sexuality, when it comes down to gender. Um, and that's the love that I want to be yoked to. I don't want to, I don't want to go to the world's definition of love. I tell people all the time, love is not love. Like there is one person that defines love, God, because he is love. And so if we want to embody the fullness of God's love, we got to look to scripture. We got to look to the Bible to see what that definition is, not to culture. What would you say to 
viewers who might be watching right now say, that all sounds good, but how do I actually speak about this to my neighbor? Should I be speaking about this and using this opportunity? Because so many times you can be called a bigot or you can be called a hater. So how do I appropriately speak about it? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I think I think there's going to be labels. They're going to attack us. I mean, look, I get attacked all the time. I get called those those labels. I get called those things. But the fruit of our life speaks for itself. The fruit of our family speaks for itself. This fruit of our ministry speaks for itself. And sooner or later, you know, the labels just don't stick anymore. When they see a people of love, when they see parents rising up to care for their community and care for their children, um, you know, I, th I think this actually provides an amazing opportunity for us to engage evangelistically with people. I mean, we, what we're seeing right now across America, um, even as we do these Let Us Worship rallies, you know, in every capital city, people will often come because they want to take a stand against the government or they want to take a stand for their children or whatever. And then in the middle of that, we'll say, hey, listen, we're glad you're here. What drives us to do this is the love of God. And then we'll give an altar call. And it's amazing to see those people that really are just fighting for freedom or, or in America right now, maybe just fighting for sanity. Um, but then they get hijacked by the love of God. And it provides an incredible opportunity. Um, I believe this summer in America is one of the greatest evangelistic opportunities for us as believers to promote, to share the gospel, to be bold witnesses for Jesus. I mean, this is what we're seeing, people getting, people getting baptized, people getting saved, people getting healed, delivered. Um, it's all happening, and it might start with people wanting to rise up uh, to fight against the government or fight against uh, woke ideology, but it ends up with them saying, hey, listen, I see the source of your conviction, and it actually comes from God. It actually comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. Mm, the love of God is compelling indeed. Sean Foy, great to see you tonight. Mm -hmm. Thanks for being with us. Hey, thanks so much for having me.